This is technically my 50th episode for the channel. When I say episode, that's literally what I've called the folders in my output library. In hindsight, it was an incredibly stupid sorting method because it makes finding old episodes an absolute pain in the bollocks. This isn't the 50th episode though, not according to my stupid sorting system anyway. This is episode 51 because episode 50 is taking ages and I don't know when it's going to be ready. I just wanted to make sure I got another video out because if I don't keep producing retro videos, YouTube might assume I've died and delete my channel. I'm not sure if that's how these things work, but better safe than sorry. Anyway, here's a video about Jetpack. There's not an awful lot you can say about Jetpack, but I'm going to say a few things, otherwise there'd be no point in making a video. It's a game that can be summarized in a haiku. Go and make spaceship. Once that's done, go and get fuel, then do it again. It can also be summarized in a limerick. There once was a game called Jetpack, about a man with a jet on his back, built a ship that was cool, filled it up with some fuel, something, something addictive as crack. Look, what I'm trying to say is that Jetpack is very simple, especially through the harsh goggles of history. This game was released in 1983. That's the same year that Austin Metro became Britain's best-selling car. Blackadder first aired on TV, and the year a certain someone called Clive Sinclair became Sir Clive Sinclair. I believe he invented the Nintendo or something, if memory recalls. The landscape for gaming in 1983 was really starting to bloom, and Jetpack is a game that seems to continually stand against the erosion that time so often chips away at. In dog years, this game would be a very, very sick dog indeed, but in game years, this thing has still got legs. Legs that work, anyway. Not only was it remastered for Xbox Live Arcade back when that was still existing, it also appeared on Rare Replay on the Xbox One. It even had a cameo appearance in Donkey Kong 64, for Christ's sake. The thing won't die. But why is that? What is it about Jetpack that sees it consistently reappear? For me, it was the first game I'd ever played on a rubber keyed Spectrum. I was round at a friend of my parents and I used to sneak off to the son's room who was studying at university at this point and see what games he had that I didn't. I was living it up with a Spectrum Plus 2 but he had this weird looking tiny Spectrum that I was automatically jealous of simply because it was different to what I had. Jetpack was the game I played and it absolutely blew me away. I can vividly remember sitting in that room for hours in complete silence trying over and over to get past the second level. At that age I was addicted to arcade games and, to be fair, that love of arcade games has never really left me. Jetpack was the first arcade style game I'd ever played in a home setting. It was the game that made me realise what game feel was. It's the game that made me realise that a description of a game is sometimes not enough to truly convey what's so good about it. That's what arcade games are, really, at the end of the day. Good ones, at least. Indescribable. They have to be experienced to really understand what the point of it all is. They have to be played and practiced and eventually, if you can stick it out, bested. Why do people like Burger Time? Why do people like Bubble Bobble? Why do people like Sky Kid? No one likes Sky Kid. When you really boil the gameplay down to its core, they're hard questions to answer. So, what do you do in Burger Time exactly? Well, you run around a maze and you walk on some ingredients and those ingredients fall down but then you're being chased by ingredients as well. Those are, uh, those are bad ingredients though. But you can throw pepper in the face, so that's good. It sounds shit, and jetpack sounds shit. You pick up some spaceship pieces, then you pick up some fuel, you have to avoid enemies, and the enemies change each level. You can fire a laser beam that kills enemies. That's basically all there is to it. There are minor nuances. Dropping your pieces into position from a height can be disadvantageous to delivering the pieces on the ground. There are items you can pick up for points. But I've already said more about the mechanics than is technically necessary. I've already moved on to the tertiary features of the game after a mere three sentences. The game doesn't lie in the description of events. It lies in the experience of playing it. And if you've never played it before, well, it may now feel anarchic or old or tired, but at the time, this was an original ZX Spectrum effort that brought the arcade home. 
This was where I began to understand that what a game offers on the back of the box comes second to how it feels when you play it. That inexplicable sense of tactility and taste. It's the timing, the sensation, the core movement of a game that starts and ends with your hands on the joystick. Jetpack just has to be played. It still stands strong as a game that got it right from the ground up. A simple concept that glided along on core gameplay, where the design board was boiled down to the barest essential. How do we make the game fun to play? How do we keep people coming back? They nailed that core design in 1983, and people are still coming back to etch their name in that high score table. There's really nothing more I can say. I will say one thing though, Jetpack is great, you should play it, you build a rocket and you shoot lasers like meow, pew, 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 and then you pick up fuel, and you put it in your ship and you fly off and you have to go to another level, and then sometimes you get really far and there's another ship that you have to build, and then I died. <laughs>